Chapter 2, section 1 is all about solving one-step equations. And by the end of this lesson, you should be able to solve a one-step equation with one variable and model a real-world problem with an algebraic equation and then solve it. All right, on your practice example here, it says the diagram shows the amount of money that each player starts with in a video game. To be fair, each player should have the same amount of money. What amount must be in this chest to make these two amounts equal, and how do you know? Okay, so what I would do is figure out first what player one has. So if we add all these up, there's 10, 15, 20, 22, 24, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So player one has 30 coins, or 30 cents, we'll call it. Okay, over here, player two has five, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Plus they have this treasure chest. I don't know how much is in the treasure chest, so I'm gonna put that as an X. All right, so this is our equation to, to figure out what's in that chest. How am I gonna figure out how much has to be in that chest in order for player two to equal player one? Okay, well, if I know that they have 11, I can take that away from 30. So I'm gonna subtract 11 from both sides. And 30 minus 11 is 19. And all I have left on this side is X. So that means in the treasure chest, there must be 19 coins if both of these players have equal amounts. Okay, first vocab word is equivalent equations, meaning that two equations have the same solution and are equal to each other, equivalent and equal. Okay, a couple properties of equalities here. The addition property of equality says that if A and B are the same, and when I add them to C, I'll get the same answer. Okay, so if A is three and B is three, when I add it to one, it's gonna be the same on both sides. Subtraction property is the same thing, only this time I would be subtracting. If A and B are the same, then if I subtract C away from them, I will still get the same answer. Okay, next vocab word, inverse operations are opposites or the different operations that undo each other. So for example, if something is adding, the way to undo adding is by subtracting. Okay, and vice versa, if something is subtracting, to undo that, you would add. Okay, third, if something is multiplying and I wanna undo it or take it apart, I would have to do the opposite, which is to divide. And vice versa, if something is dividing, I would have to do the opposite, which is to multiply. Okay, so knowing those things and looking, thinking back to that first example that we did together, what would the solution be of x plus 13 equals 27? Okay, last year you were probably taught to put a line down here so that you never forget that whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other side. If I'm trying to get this x alone, we need to do the inverse operation or the opposite of what's happening. Currently it's adding 13, so I'm gonna take that 13 away to figure out what my x has to be. So all I have left is x, and 27 minus 13 is 14. Okay, now I want you always to check your answer, so go back and plug this in. Is it true that 14 plus 13 equals 27? If it is, then you know you have the right answer. Our x should be 14 for that one. Perfect. Okay, what is the solution of negative seven equals b minus three? All right, I want this b to be by itself, so I have to do the opposite of subtracting three, which would be adding three. Okay, and a negative seven plus three is negative four. Okay, so let's see if that works. 
is negative 7 equal to a negative 4 minus 3? Yes, it is. That means we got the right answer. Make sure you actually check to make sure that this is right and not just write it out and put a star. Okay, next. What is the solution of 1 half equals y minus 3 halves? Okay, put your, your line down the middle. I call those train tracks so that you know what to do on both sides. I want to keep the y by itself, so I'm going to do the opposite of subtracting 3 halves, and I'm going to add 3 halves to both sides. Okay, sometimes it's hard to see what you're doing with fractions when they're lined up like this. So I'm going to go over here and write 1 half plus 3 halves. Okay, when I'm adding fractions, I need common denominators, which I have. So I'm going to keep that denominator and add the numerators. 1 plus 3 is 4, but 4 over 2 is really just a 2. Okay, so we're going to double check that. Is 1 half equal to y, oh, sorry, to, not a y, we know what y is, to 2 minus 3 halves. Okay, well, 3 halves is 1 and a half. So if I do 2 minus 1 and a half, do I get a half? Yes, I do. Okay, then we have the multiplication property of equality and the division property. Same as the adding and subtracting, only this time the multiplication property just says if I multiply by the same thing on both sides, they'll be equal. If I divide by the same, they'll stay equal. Okay, so now we're going to switch. This time they're asking us what is the solution of 4x equals 6.4. Okay, I'm still trying to get that variable by itself. So I still need my train tracks, but this time I'm multiplying. So I need to use the inverse of multiplying which means I will be dividing by 4 on both sides. 4 divided by 4 is 1, so we count that as just canceling out because we don't have to write the 1 with our variable. So all I have left is x. 6.4 divided by 4 gives us 1.6. Okay, and to double check that, you're going to say 4 times 1.6. Check it on your calculator, make sure that equals 6.4. And because it does, I know that I have the right answer. Okay, the next one, what is the solution of x divided by 4 equals negative 9? The inverse of dividing is multiplying. So I'm actually going to multiply both sides by 4. Okay, that will cancel this out. Leave me with an x. And negative 9 times 4 is negative 36. Okay, so then we'll double check. Negative 36 divided by 4. We're hoping equals negative 9, and it does. So we are good. What is the solution of 19 equals r divided by 3? Okay, since I'm dividing, I need to do the inverse operation and multiply by 3 on both sides. These will cancel and r will be equal to 57. And then we're going to double check. 19 equals 57 divided by 3. And if you double check that with your calculator, we've got that one right. All right, solve using reciprocals. Okay, if you remember, that was one of our vocab words from chapter 1. What is the solution of 4 fifths times m equals 28? All right, the reason that they want us to use reciprocal is because we are currently multiplying a fraction with a variable, and because we're multiplying, we need to divide by that fraction. Well, dividing by fractions is not something that we like to do. So I'm going to come over here and do a side problem. Right now I have 28 divided by 4 fifths. Okay, well, it's easiest if I have both being fractions, so I'm going to turn that one into a fraction. And then, because it's dividing fractions, I'm going to keep, change, and flip. Okay, so I'm going to take that 4 fifths, and I'm going to flip it upside down, and make it 5 fourths. Okay, before, especially since this is kind of a big number, I'm going to simplify before I multiply. These two cannot be simplified, but these two can. They can both be divided by 4, which will turn this into a 1 and turn this into a 7. 
Then I can just go straight across. 7 times 5 on the top is 35. 1 times 1 on the bottom is just 1. So my m here will be equal to 35. I know that's a lot of work. Let's try another one. Well, is the solution of 12 equals 3 fourths times x? Okay, so I need to divide by 3 fourths. Okay, and I'm going to make a side problem again. 12 over 1 divided by 3 over 4. Then I keep the first one, change this to multiplication, flip this one over. Keep, change, flip. Okay, so I'm going to make this 4 thirds. I'm going to simplify before I multiply. The 1 and 4 cannot be simplified, but the 12 and 3 can both be divided by 3, giving me a 1 and a 4. Then I multiply straight across, and I get 16 over 1, which is really just x equals 16. Toucans and blue and yellow macaws are both tropical birds. The length of an average toucan is about two-thirds of the length of an average blue and yellow macaw. Toucans are about 24 inches long. What is the length of an average blue and yellow macaw? Okay, so we're going to have to write our own equation, and then we're going to have to solve it with one of these steps. Okay, so if I look at what they're telling me, I know the length of an average toucan is, remember is means equals, two-thirds of, tells me to multiply, the length of an average blue and yellow macaw. Okay, so a toucan is two-thirds of a macaw. That's how we get this equation. Then they tell us that toucans are about 24 inches long. Okay, so I should be able to take this information right here, this two t equals 24, and plug it in right here when I rewrite my equation. Okay, so I have 24 equals 2 thirds m. To solve this, I need to do the opposite of multiplication, so I need to divide by 2 thirds. I'm going to write my side problem, 24 over 1 divided by 2 thirds. I'm going to keep, change, flip, make this a 3 over 2. And then I'm going to simplify before I multiply. Go straight across and find out 12 times 3 is 36, 1 times 1 is 1. So a macaw, a blue and yellow macaw, is a approximately, or on average, 36 inches. An online DVD rental company offers gift certificates that you can use to purchase rental plans. You have a gift certificate for $30. The plan you select costs $5 per month. How many months can you purchase with the gift certificate? Okay, so first of all, we have to write our equation. 30 is our total amount. That's the most we can spend. So we're going to start with that. And if that's our total, that goes on one side of the equal sign. Then this $5 per month, we have to think back to what per means. Usually, per tells me that I'm multiplying $5 each month. So 5x. I'm just going to say x is months. Okay, to solve this one, I'm going to draw my train tracks, and the opposite of multiplying 5 and x is to divide by that 5. Okay, so x should be 6 months. I have enough money on that gift certificate to pay for 6 months if I'm only paying $5 per month. Okay, here's a good place to pause. Work on the next slide by yourself if you have it in your notes and then come back and see if your answers match mine.
All right, if yours matched mine, then you seem to know what you're doing. If you have questions, you can come find me today online or email me, but this is your homework due tomorrow, page 85, number 10 through 48, even, 